Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is just put this plate uh, on the inside of the legs here. Okay, and that'll be pretty easy for us to model. So we'll go into the left view, and let's just zoom in on the base of the leg. Let's go to the crate panel and grab a box, and let's just drag this out. Okay. And give it a little bit of height. And in the front view, let's move it over to the side. Okay, and I'm just going to put it right against the inside of the leg. Okay, just like that. Right. Let's figure out the dimensions of this. Let's do maybe 48 for the length, uh, 120 for the width, and we'll just do 2 or so for the uh, height. Let's maybe do 2.5. Okay. And in the left view here, let's right click and we'll convert this to edible poly. And we'll go to vertex and let's just select the four bottom verts. Okay, and then we'll go to scale and we'll just scale these out on the X a bit. Okay, just to get that angle on there. Okay. Maybe just like that. Right, let's go into edge. We'll select the center edges here. Let's do a connect. And we'll just do one segment with no pinch or slide. And OK. Then we'll go into vertex and let's just grab the end ones on the left side here. We'll just delete those. OK, so we only have half here. All right. OK, let's go back into edge. And let's select uh, the center edges again. We'll do another connect. Okay. We'll just do one segment. Let's just slide this down to the end. Okay. Let's do about negative 90 on the slide for that. And okay. We'll just go into vertex and grab these bottom verts here. Okay. I'm just going to move those over to even this out a bit. Okay. Just like that, maybe. All right. Then we'll go into polygon and we'll select this polygon right here on the outside. Okay. You can see here that this has a, a bit of an extrusion. So let's extrude this poly out. Okay. And let's just do maybe 2.5 on that as well. And okay. So just like that. All right. Get out a polygon here. Go back into the left view. And we'll just do a mirror. And we'll do a copy on the X again, and OK. And then we'll go over to Attach, and we'll just attach the two sides together, OK? And we'll turn that off, and then we'll just select the center verts. Let me just get a better angle on this. OK, just the center verts, the four of them in the middle, or the eight, sorry. And we'll just do a weld. OK, we're just looking for a difference of four here. Point one should be enough, but if it's not, just stop this a little bit until uh, you see a difference of four. So hit OK, then we'll go back into Edge, and let's select this center edge here, and do a loop, and we'll just control backspace that out. Okay, so just like that. Okay, and let's go into the left view here, and we'll just drag uh, through all the edges. Okay, then we'll hold Alt, and we'll just deselect the uh, side ones, alright, so we just have the top and bottom selected. Okay, and I'm just going to uh, chamfer these down. Take this down a bit. Let's do maybe 0.3 or so on that. And OK. Then we'll select the corner edge here. And we'll ring that one. OK. And then we'll just deselect this edge here on the front and the one on the side. OK. And the same two at this end. Just deselect this one and this one. Okay. So we just have uh, these edges selected. Okay. And yeah, let's do another chamfer. Actually, let's cancel that for a second. Let's do a loop first just to get these uh, small corner edges here. And then we'll chamfer. Let's do that maybe 0.4. And okay. And I think that's all the detail we really need to put into that piece.
Okay, so let's put a smooth modifier on this. And we'll just hit auto smooth. Okay, and I think that's good enough. So let's name this. And we'll just call it something like lag bracket. Okay, and we'll change the color to black. And put the gray shader on there. Okay. So let's also center the pivot. So hierarchy tab, effect pivot only, center the object, and then we'll turn the effect pivot only off. Okay, and let's hit mirror up here. Okay, and we'll do another copy on the X and OK. Then we'll right click the move tool and we'll just take out the uh, negative sign on the X and hit enter. Okay, and I'll just move our copy over and line it up properly. Okay, so we'll close that. Okay, let's check this out. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so I think the next thing we'll do is just start working on this uh, upper part of the base. Okay, so let's go into the top view. Right, and we'll go into the crate panel and let's grab a cylinder. Okay, and we'll drag it out in the center. Okay, maybe something like that. Give it a little bit of height. All right, and let's uh, right click on the move tool and we'll just uh, zero out X and Y. All right, just to make sure that everything's centered. Okay. Let's move this down to the base. Okay. All right, and let's just figure out what size this is going to need to be. Okay, so let's let's do a radius of maybe 107. And for the height, let's do maybe just 10. Let's do maybe 12 for the height. We don't need any of these height segments, so we can take those off. And let's give it two cap segments. And I'm not going to turbo smooth this uh, piece, so let's up the sides a bit. Let's do maybe let's do maybe 80, okay? Just because it's such a uh, a big piece of the model, and we want it to look round when it's uh, rendered, okay? So I think we'll start with this. Okay, and let's just line this up. Okay, we're just going to slightly push it into the bottom of the legs. Okay, just make sure you don't have it intersecting the uh, door here on the side. All right, give it a little bit of clearance. Okay, and I think that's about the size we're looking for. Uh, you can see this one's a little bit smaller. Um, it really only comes to this corner here. It doesn't go around uh, the outside, which ours does, but I think that's okay. Um, we're just a little off on the uh, angle here, but I think it looks fine. Okay, so let's right click and convert this to edible poly. Whoops. Edible poly. And I'm just going to change the color for a second. Okay, and the first thing we'll do is go into polygon. Yeah, let's go into the front view here. We'll just select all the polys. Okay, make sure you have ignore back facing turned off. And then we'll hold down Alt and just deselect the top and sides. Okay, so we just have the bottom caps. Let's delete those. All right, let's go into border and select the bottom border. Okay, and then we'll control click edge. Okay, and we just got a little bit of a lip coming out uh, here. So let's uh, go into the top view, zoom in, and we'll go to scale. Let's just hold down shift and scale this out a little bit. Okay, maybe something like that. And you can see down at the bottom in the uh, XYZ how far I'm uh, scaling that. So about 105. Okay, just down here. All right, and let's actually maybe give that a little bit more. Okay, so I'm just gonna scale normally. Maybe something like that. Okay, and then we'll uh, go to the move tool and we'll just hold down shift and just drag down on the Z. Okay. And I'm going to bring that down a little bit uh, farther than it looks in the picture. Okay, just so it can sit inside this base piece without uh, having a gap. Okay, so something like that. And then we have this uh, punch in, in the top here. And you can see this has some angled faces on it. 
but I think I'll just do mine's uh, circular so it's a little bit faster than trying to uh, model that in. Okay, so let's go in here. We'll select one of the edges on this loop. We'll loop that. And we just want to make sure that it's uh, not underneath the leg plate here. Okay, so let's just go to scale. We'll just scale this down a bit just to bring it in. Okay, maybe something like that. Right. Now let's go to polygon. And let's just select the center polygons, all 80 of them. Okay, and let's open up bevel. Let's take this down into the negatives. Okay, let's do maybe negative 10. And for the outline, we'll bring that in quite a bit. Let's do maybe negative 14. And OK. OK. So now let's go in here and we'll go to edge. Let's just grab the inner edge and this one here. And we'll loop those two. Let's just chamfer those down. All right, and we'll bring that down pretty tight. Let's do maybe 0.2 and OK. Then we'll come around to the outside here. Let's grab this one here and do another loop and a chamfer. And we'll do that maybe 0.2 as well and OK. Then we'll grab the uh, outer one here and loop that. And let's chamfer that. We'll take this up a bit. Uh, we still want it to be pretty sharp. So let's maybe do 0.6 and we'll hit apply and then we'll do a double here. So let's just bring this down the second time. And we'll do about 0.25 on the second one and OK. Let's select the one on the outside here. And we'll do this one as well. And let's do maybe 0.3. We'll hit apply and we'll bring this down a little bit. OK, let's do maybe 0.12 on that one and OK. Alright, so we'll get out of edge and we'll just put a smooth modifier on this. Okay, and we'll hit auto smooth. Okay, and I think that's uh, enough detail for that piece. Okay, so we'll just name it, let's call it uh, base top, and let's put the uh, black color and gray shader on there. So just like that. Okay, and you can see we have a couple of little simple plates here. So let's just throw those in really quick. Okay, so let's uh, select the base and let's also select the two legs. Okay, and we'll just hide unselect it. Okay, this will just make it a little easier for us to see. Okay, and then we'll go into the crate panel and we'll grab another cylinder. Okay, I'm just going to draw that out down here. Give it a little bit of height. And we don't need any cap segments on this, so we'll just take that down to one. And let's figure out the radius we need. Let's just bring this down so it's sitting on the base. Okay, just like that. Okay, let's do maybe eight on the radius. And we'll just do one or so for the height. Let's actually do maybe 0.7. Okay, we don't need this many sides. Let's take this down a bit. Let's do maybe 50. Okay, and you can drop that a little bit lower if you want. Uh, you probably don't need to have that many, but uh, I'm just going to leave it. Okay, so we'll right click and convert this to edible poly. Select the top uh, polygon and then we'll control click edge. And then we'll just chamfer that top down a bit, really slightly. Let's do 0.1 and OK. And then we can go underneath here and we'll go and select the bottom polygon and we can just delete that. OK, so just like that. And let's uh, put a smooth modifier on it again and auto smooth. And let's just name this and we'll just call it something like uh, a circle plate maybe. Okay, and let's go over on the side here on the leg, and we'll just steal one of our bolts from over here. Okay, so we'll select leg, we'll go up to group and ungroup this. Okay, 
and it will select one of our bolts. Okay. And in the uh, front view, I'm just going to hold shift and dr drag a copy on the X, and we'll choose copy and OK. We'll zoom in here, and we'll go to rotate, and uh, make sure you have your ro uh, angle snaps on. Okay, so we'll just rotate that 90 degrees. Right, and we'll just pull this down uh, to the plate. Right. Let's just move it back here a bit. Right. And we might need to scale that down a little bit. So on the top view, I'm just going to scale it in. Maybe something like that. And we'll just put it over at the edge. And let me just change the color of our uh, plate here. Okay, and you can see we have a few around this uh, plate here. So let's click on our plate. It will go into the hierarchy tab and just center the pivot point to make sure. Okay, and then we'll go to our bolt again and we'll go to the hierarchy tab and click on effect pivot only. Okay, and then I'm going to go up to the align tool and I'm going to click on the plate and then we'll do X, Y, Z and pivot point and pivot point and OK. Okay, so the bolt's pivot point will be centered with our uh, circle here, plate. So we'll turn that off. And let's go up to tools and array. Okay. And let's see, let's activate rotate. We'll put 360 degrees on the Z total. Choose copy. And let's take this down to like eight. And we'll just hit preview. Okay, and that'll give us our bolt copies around our plate evenly. So we'll hit OK. And then we'll just zoom in here and make sure everything's sitting on the surface. Okay, so we'll select all of our bolts and just pull those down a bit so they're intersecting the plate. Okay, just like that. All right, and I'm just going to also select the uh, plates. So we have the bolts and plates selected, and I'm just going to group this. Okay, and we'll just call that circle plating. All right, just in case we need to clone it around, it'll be easier. All right. So just like that. Okay, and uh, I would assume there's probably another one of these on the other side. Uh, everything on this pretty much seems to be uh, identical on both sides. Okay, so let's just put one on the other side so we have more detail over there. Okay, so let's select our plate group there. And let's go into Effect Pivot Only again. And we'll right-click the Move tool and just zero out the X and Y spinners. Okay, so it's centered with our uh, base here. Okay, then we'll turn that off and turn off the button. And in the top view, okay, we're just going to go rotate and we'll turn off our angle snaps for a second. And you can see the pivot point move back to the group and that occasionally happens. So let's go back into the hierarchy tab, effect pivot only, and we'll just hit uh, align to world. Okay, and that'll center it to uh, zero on the X and Y, which is right in the center of our base. Okay, so we'll turn that back off and now we'll just hold down shift and rotate a copy of this over to the other side. Okay, just like that, and okay, and it doesn't have to be perfectly positioned, uh, just get it close. Okay, Okay, and we can also see that we have a little small plate on this lip uh, here, so let's just make that quick. So let's select the base, okay, and I'm going to go into the top view, okay, and we'll go into polygon here. Alright, let's turn on door back facing. We'll zoom here on the front, and let's just select maybe these three polygons here that are just over from this plate. Okay, just like that. All right, and we'll go down here to detach and we'll just detach as a clone. Okay, and we'll just leave that object one for now. And okay, so it'll break those polygons off as a separate object. Okay, so let's just select them like that. And I'm just gonna move that up slightly. Let's center it to pivot point two. Okay, I'll just pull that up like that. All right. Let's go into the modify panel here. And we'll go to border and just click and select the whole border around it. Then we'll just hold shift and drag down on the Z, okay, to extrude those edges. All right, just like that. And let's see. Let's uh, go into edge. Select these two edges here. We'll loop those and we'll chamfer them. Okay, and we'll bring that out a bit just to get us a little bit more smoothness. Okay, we'll just double chamfer them. 
maybe something like that. It doesn't really matter what the amount is, just uh, want to even out a little bit more. Okay. So let's go Control I to invert the edge selection, and then we'll just chamfer these down a bit. Okay, we'll do that pretty tight. Let's do 0.1 and OK. And we'll just name this place and let's just call it uh, maybe base plate. Okay. Then we'll come up here to our uh, circular one, grab that. So let's just ungroup this. Okay, and we'll just steal one of these bolts again. Okay, and let's go into the top view. And we'll just hold shift and drag a copy. Okay, and let's also center the pivot point. And we'll move that down. Okay, and just set it right on top of the uh, plate. Okay, just like that. Let's see, let's... Let's just move it over to the corner here, maybe. Okay. We'll just drag another copy to this side. Okay. And we'll select both of them. And let's do the other end. Okay, and these don't have to be perfectly lined up. Uh, just get them close. Okay, so let's put that there, maybe. Then we'll just move this one over. Okay, just like that. And let's maybe do a couple in the middle. Okay, so let's put some right here on this edge, maybe. Okay. Okay, and then we'll just do another one over here. And maybe one up here. Okay, and if you want to, you can just uh, give them a little bit of random rotation to make them uh, not look just like you cloned it a bunch of times. Okay. Okay, that's a minor detail. It's not really uh, a big deal. Okay, so just like that. And then we'll do the same uh, thing here. Let's go into wireframe. We'll just select all of these and the plate, and then we'll deselect the base. Right. We'll just group this. And let's call that plate. Oops. And OK. Right, and in the top view. Let's go into the hierarchy panel, we hit effect pivot only, and we'll just align to the world. Okay, there we go. And you can also do that by right clicking the move tool and zeroing out the X and Y. Okay, so we'll turn that off. And then we'll just go to rotate and we'll hold shift and we'll rotate and copy this around to the other side. Okay, and we'll just put that like there maybe. And okay. Alright, just like that. Okay, so let's unhide all.